Good afternoon and welcome to Gulfstream. Today on this beautiful Friday afternoon, it's a hot one here in South Florida, but uh, the sun is shining, the track is fast. Tapita is in play today. We'll be back on the grass on July 5th next week. Well, it just snuck up, July snuck up on us, didn't it? Next Friday, and we'll draw that card today. So uh, very looking forward to that. Just a little, what about two week hiatus. The turf has held up so, so well since they brought it back uh, at the start of the championship meet last year. You could see it out there. We just give it a little respite here yep. during the summer uh, for a couple weeks. That's it. And then we'll be right back to battle next Saturday. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to a big weekend here as well at Gulfstream Park. Yeah, we've got uh, mandatory payouts in all pools on Sunday. That includes the Rainbow Six, Super High Five, and the Late Pick Five. So that's uh, this Sunday. We've already got videos out there online and uh, tickets out there as well for yep. Sunday. So it'll be a, a big day. And today, Brian, uh, the, the Rainbow already climbing up there. Yeah, it's going to be a $75,000 estimate today. Probably passed that pretty comfortably. They bet a lot of it on Sunday, and they bet into it yesterday as well. So... You know, we checked the day off the calendar yesterday. If we're fortunate enough, you know, to, to get to Sunday, it'll be another big pool. Could be a seven-figure kind of pool. But today's uh, sequence, Ron's got a ticket. He'll be with me a little bit later. And then, of course, tomorrow, really strong card tomorrow as well. 11 races highlighted by the musical romance. It's a good weekend to be here in sunny South Florida. But kicking things off on this Friday is uh, my partner here with the early pick five. Team. Yeah, this is a tough sequence. And this is about as high end as I, I, I really want to go at $54. And to be honest, I had to shave it down from 96. Luckily, there was a scratch or two. I didn't really lose anybody too, too high. Uh, on the pole. Race number two, the top pick is the seven. Sting Music, you can see the single in Amy the Butcher in, uh, I'm not going to call it a match race by any stretch of the imagination, but Marshmallow Queen and Amy the Butcher are going to go at it again. Race number four, I do scratch into Miguel's Bell. That's where I lost actually my top two, so that hurt a little bit. And in race number five, that's the big spread and that's got my long shot and that is all the way to the outside, Sudoku Terry off the claim for Rohan on a $54 early pick five ticket. Race one, uh, allowance optional claimers for three-year-olds, five and a half furlongs on the tapita to get things going today. We scratched the three, Adios Cole in the eight, Grand Maxime. We'll see Adios Cole tomorrow, I believe. And uh, the four for you on top, Sabian. Yeah, because uh, a couple different reasons here. Uh, I, I like that general ledger race that he comes out of. He's been freshened since January. Oscar Gonzalez takes over, and this is a barn that's been hitting pretty good yeah. uh, of late. The work's certainly whisper ready. I feel like I, that I like that race in a group of these horses, and we can show it to you in a second. You're not going out of that race either, so we'll wait on the on the, the, the replay. They're just they've been I don't know not taking turns beating up it I don't know if I believe that race at all so yeah I, I'm not sure either and it's kind of a, a little bit of a toss up I, that's why I went to the seven go yeah. Billy go kind of taking the same angle you are this is a horse that's been freshened up since then gonna start first time as a three-year-old so we'll get Lasix on for the first time perfect technical outside draws never been on the tapita no both of our horses are, are quote unquote slow but now you've heard us you heard her more than me but now I'm agreeing with her. I don't really care about the figures anymore. Right. I want good form. I want running styles, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And that's why Sabian and Go Billy Go probably look a little better to us than maybe to the, the, right. the average customer uh, because mm -hmm. some of these horses might be a little dressed up figure-wise. Exactly. And we'll show the yeah. replay now of Louis the Sun King, East Boston Benny. Uh, this is a group of Karongo. We won't have to pay too much attention to Adios, Cole, and Grand Maxime, but really it was literally the gang was all here in this spot. And, uh, uh, you know, Louis the Sun King was very interesting here to get this type of win because I don't know where this race came from. No, and that's the thing. Was it first time to PETA? Okay, that's great. But boy, he absolutely really did freak here at 16 to 1, by the way. Yeah. So not only was he 16 to 1 and it's kind of an implausible outcome. Look at the splits here. This is where we tell you sometimes it doesn't matter how fast they go. They just keep going. But he beat several that are coming back here today. And so I... I got to see it again. It's yeah. as simple as that. I got to see it again. I want to make him prove it, and we're going to get prices on both of our horses. Yeah, we will. And uh, that's it. We see race number one. Now, race two, it starts the early pick four here. We've got Maiden, $25,000 level for three years old and up, mile and 70 yards on the Tapita. I've got the early pick four ticket, and we'll take a quick look at it here. And uh, I agree, this is a tricky sequence early. I had no singles in this early 
spot, and that was tough for me. Race three, I do have the four Fairhope Curly. That is my long shot. Nope, it's not. Uh, race number four, the eight on top. Uh, this is Omo Tin Girl, and in race number five, uh, the seven Sudoku Terry on top as well. Fairhope Curly is your uh, old captain, Connie. You're gonna go down with that ship too. Huh? I am, and if he's three to one, I will eat this program. So he's got to be three to one. I doubt that. Okay. Has to be. Race two. Uh, these are all three-year-olds in this race, despite it being a three-year-old and upwards race. Uh, the seven on top for you, Sting Music. Yeah, this is a bit of a spread race, you know, for me too. And you've got her in there. Liz Doble's going good again. Good to see. The progression looks looks solid. I know we're trying the Tapita and we haven't been on it. And the, the salty races were turf, but I just feel like, you know, hey, this is a better horse. I, this horse was headed out on the Tapita uh, with Johnny Ortiz in the thick of the championship meet. And yeah. I just feel like he's better now than he was then. And that's going to make him a major player. And I, you know, Whiting Field, boy, the law, not only the losses are, are adding up, but the the way, I don't know, the way he's lost races too. Yeah, he's kind of an interesting horse though. Um, the last time he was on the Tapita, it was against Sting Music and right. he was defeated by Sting Music. So now with Rowan Crichton, he's got him in a good spot, but he's just, he's there. He's just not sealing the exactly. deal. And yeah. that makes him very hard to trust. So I'm, I'm spreading in the, this race. It's hard to have such a solid opinion. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. The two we've got in the mix as well, Rimmerton. Yeah, so here's another, what do you do with him? He blows way up on the turf last time for really, we have no idea why. He was 12 to one. He was really had slow form at Tampa. A uh, little percentage bar. Now, we're going to try Tapita. He's been on it before. Uh, wasn't pretty, but I think he's a better horse yeah. now. What do you get today? You don't get 12 to 1, that's for sure. No, you don't. Uh, I think that this is a smart play, to keeping him on the Tapita, because uh, I'd, I'd like to see him stretch out yeah. on it as well. Uh, race number three. It is a good one. It's a it's a small field, but it's a, it's a dense field at that. Six furlongs on the main track here that is fast today. These are for three-year-old fillies, allowance optional claimers. Like I said, a field of six, and the six, Amy the Butcher. Yeah, we'll show you the race. Yeah. Amy the Butcher beat Marshmallow Queen two back. Marshmallow Queen has since run and placed in a stakes race. Um, it's post position. It's now Amy the Butcher with Safi Joseph Jr. off a switch here. Um, you know, there's a lot to like. That Unfortunately, the 20 to one that she was this day uh, is long, long gone. They're gonna f hammer her today. She was in last week. He's got a couple really strong works in her too, Samantha. Uh, it's a good spot for her. Yeah, it is. And the draw is very, very Perfect. good for here too. Marshmallow Queen, I think. I don't want to say she's gotten exposed now because that's not really it. But uh, she's a game filly. But the difference between Amy the Butcher and Marshmallow Queen is Marshmallow Queen has had a race since then. Right. So I think it kind of takes an edge off of her a little bit. Yeah, and the post position's not ideal. She's probably going to have to wire this field. Listen, it was a very good third yeah. in the game face behind um, Michia and then the, the Oakland horse that Safi had. So uh, it was a good effort. I just yeah. think the post position plays against her today. Yeah, it, it does. And it seems like Amy the Butcher is just going in the right direction. Now, Fairhope Curly, my idea was I think they're just going to bottom out these two on the, on the board. Yeah, that's why you're going to be three to one. I think I'll be much higher than that. Oh, you're much higher than that? Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Um, yeah, th I don't know. They're going to better. It's it's Safi. It's Drayden Van Dyke. He's had good success. It is a class drop. Um, I, She just doesn't look any good to me. I know she, this is your angle. She's trying to. What's the Buchero stat? I, I'm interested in seeing that. Yeah, it's really good is with it? dirt sprints. Heck yeah. Wow. Because uh, these the, the, the routes are, are not that great, but All on right. dirt sprints, 17%. This is really good. The average sire, I think, is like 13, 12. This is huge. For this it. is... Um, they never bet this filly. No, that's... I don't like that either. This is, to me, the well, you can't see it, but the wall's right behind us, and we're throwing something at it and hoping it sticks. Yeah. It has not worked on the tapita, and it hasn't worked on the turf either, and she is a tapita. She is a turf horse, excuse me. Yeah, uh, they thought they thought. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Well, we'll find out today. At least uh, I don't if she's three to one, I will not be betting her. Okay. Yep. At all. Uh, the problem is for you. The other three horses, you can't bet. 
Yeah, that's, that's the true. That we, but well, yeah, they do yeah. some interesting things with the odds here sometimes. <laughs> so uh, we'll we'll see in uh, just a couple of hours. We're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, Ron Nicoletti has got that Rainbow Six ticket. And again, Sunday it's mandatory payout for the Rainbow Six, Late Pick Five, and the last race, Super High Five. So don't forget that. We'll be right back. And uh, they're off. past performances with one best-in-class product you now get all three past performance formats easily switch between views access the most trusted information in horse racing with DRF all access past performances go to DRF.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today Welcome back to Gulf Street today. Brian Nato and Samantha Perry with you on this beautiful Friday afternoon here. We've got a fast track. Pete is in play today. And Brian, uh, big things happening this weekend. Rainbow Six is mandatory Sunday. Yes, yeah, Sunday is mandatory. But today, $75,000 in the estimated jackpot. I, I would think we passed that. I, I think we beat that yesterday. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you heard us say it time and time again. You get a price in there. You get a couple shot mid make kind of shots in there and you have a legitimate chance right. at, at sweeping this thing let's take a look at ron's ticket he'll be out with me for race number one ronnie and i or uh, actually ron and samantha excuse me are going to film a video today we've got videos already out there about the rainbow six races on sunday but this is ronnie's ticket today four deep in this opening leg uh which i don't disagree with because i lost my top two picks in here i, I know his best bet's not in there and his best bet hit at nine dollars yesterday by the way uh no singles in here so a 38 40 he'll talk a little bit more about it we've got some solid classier races today so i think that uh, bodes well he's not even single in proverb in race seven which i find is interesting and neither am i so uh 38 40 for ron let's get into it now a uh, competitive field yeah. here of sixteen thousand dollar claimers five and a half furlongs on the tapita track here we do lose the four major price and the six face the music from this spot here and uh, the Two for you, Miguel's Bell. Show the replay. Yeah, the old double scratch because I had this 4628. Oh. So we'll show Miguel's Bell, though. I don't want to take anything away from her. Um, this was a major step up in class. She did get a little flow aided here. She got set up. The winner got loose and then ended up frying everybody, including Chloe's toy. Miguel's Bell kind of picked up the pieces. But, you know, this was Carlos David at 17-1. to 1. When, when is the last time that's ever happened? So, point being, she was in over her head a little bit, facing older horses for the first time, too. She ran very, very well in this spot. I don't expect to think that she's going to be that far behind early on today. Um, again, the old double scratch for me, but she's a big, big threat in here. Yeah, she is, and this is another one that they kind of don't ever really bet her, right. at least in, in this year. She is one that... She's run some good races, but she doesn't get the win done either. So I find yeah. her a bit hard to trust. She was the one I left off okay. on my, my early pick four, but I did have a scratch. Uh, the eight, Omo Tin Girl. She's a four-year-old taking on some three-year-olds here. That's a, a, a good thing in this spot, and she's been freshened up. Yeah, she's probably going to be a pretty stiff favorite right now right. over her overall body of work. As you mentioned, she's also four. She's yeah. got speed. She can be placed anywhere. It's a good spot for her today. Yeah, it is. It's a, just such a tactical draw as well. The seven, Cozy Colby, one of two for Rohan Crichton. Now they're right next door to each other. Well, you know, you try to bob and weave with Rohan. You try to figure him out. He's crafty in spots. Other times they don't bet him. I, I don't know. This horse is so slow. Um, she's got a second on the tapita. It was time with a sundial, but now it's Rohan. Uh, Edgar is here. She's worked well, yeah. too. I, I, I don't know what you're going to get. They're going to bet her. She's a three-year-old. She's running against older horses for the first time. Here's the other thing that bugs me a little bit. You look at her track record, Georgina, Baxter, Carlos David, Kieran McGee up at our sister track, Carlos David. Again, these are very, very high percentage trainers, right. and, you know, they really haven't gotten a lot out of her in terms of running fast. Yeah. 
It's uh, mm. it's interesting, but I, I I hate leaving off another Rohan Crane. Well, I get that. Uh, yeah, so. he's got the five off reclaim. You know, no action. So. Yep, and that that's another filly that right. she's. It's been a long time since she's won a race as well. Race five. It starts the late pick five, which on Sunday will be a mandatory payout pool. Mile and seventy yards on the Tapita track. We'll take a quick look at my late pick five. I'm singling proverb. I guess I missed yeah, no, the I, memo here. I'm going to show you the replay, but I, I listen, I, I get it. Everybody else is too. Yeah. Uh, race six, the five, I, I'm singling Megan making money. She's my best bet today. I liked her better a couple weeks ago on the dirt, but uh, we are just have to bob and weave like uh, my partner says. Race number seven, there's proverb singling uh, that one. Race eight, I do have the eight on top. That is palace flirt. And in race nine, the finale, um, I do have the five on top, or pardon me, the one, uh, Lord Eddard Stark, not, Ooh. yeah. Um, so we got the North Remembers home. We're gonna try a, right. a Game of Thrones two day double here. Uh, race five though, it's a tricky one. It's a field of seven and we both landed on the same horse here. Yeah, I don't like this race in terms of having a real strong conviction. Let's show you Sudoku Terry yeah. here. Rohan off the claim. He's got a couple of them in here. This is my long shot today. She's eight on the line. I hope we get the price in here. She is looking up at some of these gals. Now, this is a blown start here at 40 cents on the dollar. Um, you're going to see her actually drop out of your picture. She was so much the best in this race. Um, we're going five and a half, by the way, out of the tapita. She's nowhere to be found right <laughs> no. now. And I, I have to give her credit. I have to give Miguel Vasquez credit. You can't win from here ever on the Tapita. I know she was 80 cents on the dollar. I, I get all that. But this is a monumental ask. And, and to Miguel's credit, you know, sometimes you just see him, not him, you just see this say, well, you know what, we'll fight again another day. But here she comes rolling deep on the outside, mid-course. And she's going to get up in time. She's actually going to win by a half length, which seems impossible yeah, right now. Yeah, really does. She's got route form, okay? Um, it's not on the tapita. It's on the turf. She's looking up at a lot of these gals because they are routers and they are tapita routers. But I think we've got upside here. Yeah. We've got Rohan Crichton off the claim. He's also got the six gray princess off the claim as well. Well, maybe we're, if we're both picking her, she's not going to be the, the eight to one. She should be a square price, and I think she's going to – I like her today in this spot. Yeah, I do too. I, it was really difficult what she did, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. and uh, she does look pretty good in this spot. Now, the two don't mess with Tess. This is another one. She's going to – she comes into this race in solid form because that was a very impressive victory, uh, and, I mean – yeah. Where did it come from, though? Because well, she didn't run like that in some time. No, but she is four for nine on the Tapita. That's, and that's yeah. the only Tapita race I see on my page, at least. And yeah. it was a tour de force. Uh, can she back it up? I don't know. You hear us talk all the time that that's a little tough to trust to, to back races up. Yeah. But you look at that one, and it puts her firmly in the mix against this kind of group. Mm, yeah, it really does. Uh, the five rounding things out, Mad Meta Mim. Uh, she came off a big victory, too. You can't take a lot away from her. You can't. She's rising, but she's done it twice impressively in her last two tapita starts and they're going to better for sappy and edgar yeah. and she's probably the horse to beat in here yeah but it'll be interesting to see what they do with the the odds in this race race six a late pick four kicks off here five and a half furlongs on the tapita brian you've got the ticket yeah we'll take a look at it now just a ten dollar play because i got my best bet right off the rip here All in the right. five megan making money too deep in race seven i'm gonna pick super curioso we'll, we'll, we'll tell you about it in a second there's a spread in race eight, I've got no opinion here. The, the dart landed on number eight, Palace Flirt, Abreu, lay six going on, and then in race number nine, 53 is your order. Fly the W is on top, but we'll tell you why, or I will at least, why Lord of War could narrow the gap or maybe even turn the tables today. Uh, 10 bucks. All right, perfect. Punch it a couple of times. It's a good ticket, especially if you beat some of these favorites. So we both have the same best bet here with Ooh. Megan making money. Well, the interesting thing is that uh, Megan making money is is just, you know, the wins two straight seconds at short prices. I get it, but Ronald Coy's been going good. I yeah. love the post here um, as well. Flirtini is a very, very fast horse, and she wired last time. Yeah. I don't see any Flirtinis in here today. No, and Megan is, should get set up very well right. here. Uh, there's only one three-year-old in this race, and that's the outside with gridlock. But Megan making money, although I do think that uh, – 
her dirt form is at least more consistent. She's she's good on the Tapita, too. Yeah, I mean, she's 7 for 12 in the exact uh, two wins, five seconds. I get all that, but this is a barn that's that's solid, and it's I like her running style and post. Yeah. So. Uh, talk to me about the three, Foggy Noak. She's coming off of a win. Yeah, and she's moving up for Ronnie Spatz, and I like this confident kind of move here. Now she's in a spot where she can't be claimed. She got through the 2L last time. The form looks like it's progressing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if Megan making money fries the other horses that want to run with her, maybe she can pick up some pieces underneath. Yeah, and we saw Chloe's toy earlier in that replay right. uh, with Miguel's bell, and Chloe's toy just got fried. Yeah, absolutely. She got fried chasing uh, the, the winner that day who yeah. got loose, and she paid the price. Um, better spot for her. Steve Badu's quietly done some solid things here, uh, but she could get in a little bit of a, a jackpot here again today. Down inside, does she have to go or not? Race seven, uh, pick three, rolling pick threes all day. They're a dollar minimum now, and those have been paying huge yeah. uh, if you, you pay attention to that. Uh, one mile, this is uh, the feature today. It's a very, very competitive field. We do scratch the two lightning tones. It leaves a field of seven and... Super curioso. Yeah. Let's show you. Proverb okay. beat him pretty good, and he beat him on the square. I'm yeah. not going to say he didn't when they met two back for both of these horses. Super curioso, kind of, kind of, sort of doing the dirty work here. He's down on the inside. Listen, if he has to go 46 and three today, he's got no chance. You can't do that. That's too fast, especially when you got Proverb licking his chops behind you. But Samantha, I thought he fought on pretty nicely. He's in a tight spot here. He comes through like a professional. And uh, I thought this was a pretty solid effort. The other reason now, there's a couple different things going on here. Super Curioso in at 120 this day. Proverb in at 120 this day. Well, what's going on today? 123 for Proverb, 118 for Super Curioso. I'm not a huge weight guy, but it's five pounds. The other thing is... Yeah, Proverb won by three lengths last time, right? Mm -hmm. Well, he beat Spitzer Per Comente, who's not a dirt horse. No. He was terrible in his next start. He was 25 to 1 in this start. I thought Proverb had to work really hard to get yeah. by him. And maybe we meet in the middle a little bit today. I just wonder, was Super Curioso, is this a horse that the two... I don't want to say the two turns is better for because he has one sprinting going six and a half and uh, he has one at this one turn mile but I don't know it's like I don't he he doesn't I don't know what he wants to do because he'll like give up the lead and then he'll come yeah. back and then I, I just I don't know I don't know where he's at he's such a an interesting horse in to me. theory we've got long shot impossible speed on the one yeah in theory he's not supposed to be inside today like he was last time he's supposed to be outside right. getting first run on proverb that's the trip he should be pulling today and i'm sure edgar perez who's getting aboard today sees that as well and oh by the way i know it was against 6250 at the bottom edgar won by the length of the stretch with him last time he rode him yes he did and they've They've done a lot with this horse since yeah. then, so it's interesting to see how he's kind of teared off and come back down because at one point you could take him for 62.50. Yeah, he's going back the other way now, and Amador yeah. Sanchez going the other way too. Exactly, which is a, a big play. If you can beat a horse like Proverb, that will be uh, big for the rainbow. Everything blows up if you can beat yeah, Proverb. Exactly, yes. which in these dirt races, sometimes it is very hard to trust. Now, Race eight, they're state bred fillies, a mile and 70 yards. These are for three years old and upward here. Uh, we've got a field of eight, and I heard you already say the eight pals flirt. We both land on the same yeah. horse, yeah. Uh, there's with no conviction at all here. It's as big a spread race as we're going to run today. Yeah. We've been freshened. We've got solid enough to pee to form, and the L goes on today, Lasix or yeah. Fernando Abreu, on a horse that uh, I would think Miguel Vasquez puts into the race early on. Yeah, this is a horse that kind of needs to be, and the two Tapita races starting off, they weren't that great, but to give her some credit, they were her first two starts. Yeah, so exactly. maybe you can just kind of uh, write it off as that. The number one, Dale Romans, uh, left some horses here. The win two back on the Tapita. The only Tapita start was a good one. Yeah, absolutely. One, one off with ease. It's right there in front of you. Got the winner's run out of the way last time on turf. It's pretty obvious and clear that she likes the Tapita. Yeah. I mean, you look at the, the race here, there's a tepid 7-2 to two morning line favorite. Now, whoever they bet is not the point. The point is that this 
is deep and widely competitive of a race. Yeah, it is. So the two Belshaza, the other Fernando right. Abreu runner. Well, yeah, this is the one I made the favorite. Tepidly, again, it's Amicio. They seem to bet him, obviously, and comes in off a really big win during yeah. the championship meet. I know we're fresh here. That doesn't bother me in the least. We're rising in class in a spot where we can't be claimed. And that was a good race, I feel like, for the level because Calming Sea came back to win oh, a couple yeah. times throughout the championship Absolutely. meet, so that bodes well. For Let's Belshazzle. look at Nina's last gift, too, by the way, before we oh, move yeah. on quickly. Uh, there's not much going on here except showing you a horse that absolutely got that got to the tapita and absolutely freaked over. This is racehorse time here. 47-2. and two. A lot of times these, these races collapse. Watch what she does through the lane. This is a monster effort. Yeah, this was... Uh, this was impressive, and it was the first time in for a low tag, and she just skipped right away. That was her first time facing older horses as well. Yeah, now this was a race where we got a flash storm. It was taken off the turf, but, uh, you know, again, I don't really care because you just watch her level out here, watch the gap to the rest of them, um, and she's going to be on the lead, I would think, again today. Yeah, she's got to, and the third-place finisher came back to Very win. Good point. So uh, that's a... That's a good sign here. Now, race nine, uh, this could be the Coco feature, I feel like. This is a good one. A good, uh, yeah, good field here. Yep, a uh, mile and a 16th on the Tapita track here. Uh, we do have a field of seven, and it's a, such a competitive field here. Brian, we have Fly the W back. Yeah, I mean, he owns the Tapita. We'll show you yeah. his win over Lord of, Lord of War on the turf last time. Good, good effort here. Lord of War ran huge, and here's another Here's another one now. Lord of War was getting two pounds from Fly the W. He's getting five today. And uh, he's going to lose this race by a neck. And I, I, will, I can't ever take anything away from Fly the W. But you can't watch this replay and not realize that Lord of War is doing all the heavy lifting here. Yeah, he really is. And it's interesting with Lord of War because he does come over here uh, since the Woodbine and the turf weight action and had never been on he's not been on uh the tapita here and since last year and he's two for three on the tapita here yeah. um he's going to be in front he's going to get three extra pounds from fly the w today on a surface he probably prefers a little bit more mm -hmm. at least than the turf now fly the w's 13 for 27 on the tapita here yeah. it's remarkable and he was so good that he wins on the turf as well the races he's lost on the tapita have against been have been against much better groups than this as always the race goes through him yeah it does uh, the one lord eddard stark this is a horse that uh, you look at the tapita races the last one he was in that was a very very tough field he had space runner the best distance mm -hmm. his romantic and then he's just been on the turf since then yeah i still think this is a better field than anything he's ever faced yeah. on the tapita but he's two for five over he's got two wins and he's going to be a much much better price and certainly fly the w but even lord of war too yeah talk about the seven mutawid well here's a horse you want to talk about a dropper now and a horse that that yeah. that has been running against better albeit on the turf the last time he got on the tapita he ran very very well behind a couple of nice horses yeah. probably well not probably he does need a meltdown yeah. There's no doubt about that, but he'll run on late, and he can probably get a slice here and kick things up underneath for you. It's a very competitive race if it's not fly the W. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a very competitive sequence today in the rainbow. Yeah, it is, and a lot of opportunities to maybe blow things up, and uh, that is why you should put money into it today because it's continuing to grow, and this is a day whenever we refresh these pools, right. Brian, that some people don't go for it, and this is ironically enough when you get the singles well not only that there are two horses in this sequence fly the w and proverb who will be well proverb will certainly be odds on there's a mm -hmm. chance fly the w is odds on as well where if they don't win everything blows up yeah. and you see it we show it after each and every race the amount of tickets out yeah. you get one of those horses that doesn't win and those tickets will be down 70 80 90 percent yeah they will it's very competitive sequence in all fronts today in this nine race card and uh, we'll segue into the happenings over the weekend because uh, as we mentioned and we'll continue to mention on sunday we have to pay out the mandatory yeah. uh, pools. Florida fiscal year ends on June 30th, and that's why the rainbow, the late five, and the super high five, which is now the last race every day, those pools must all go. So regardless of, of what happens during the sequence, 
they will be paid out yep. and uh, they'll be they'll be very sizable if 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 we get to Sunday on the rainbow you know you'd think a couple hundred thousand is in play as in terms of a uh, an estimate and then you think five or six times of that seven figures could be firmly in play on Sunday yep it could indeed it's a very very competitive sequence as well and it's a good one uh, too I think uh, our videos will be very helpful in sifting through maybe some horses to use or toss and uh, those are all out there on YouTube now tomorrow uh, we've got the musical romance feature yeah this is an interesting race uh, tomorrow we're sprinting on the main track the musical romance uh, Safi's got a slew of them it's not a statement of fact but it's very likely that cool. Batacata who um, aired on the Tapita last week will not run but he's got a Monra he's got Bluefield and he's got Mojave Desert uh, stepping way up and trying the dirt again so yeah as usually around here the race goes through him but there's others going on uh, as well hi hello how are you is in there good good solid field yep it is and it's a tricky one very tricky one yes, anything sir. could happen uh, best bet today uh, same as you make yeah. it making money right yeah that's yeah. Uh, that is me as well and then your long shot today Sudoku uh, Terry, Sudoku Terry. all right mm -hmm. uh, mine is not a long shot well you think it's gonna be a long I shot, think though. so you think you're gonna get higher than three to one on fair hope curly I so. do we'll see. and to be fair to you regardless of what she is there's gonna be two heavy heavy favorites in there right. that she is not right so, so we'll we'll see uh, it's a competitive and fun nine race card today. We'll be with you throughout the whole day, as will Ron Nicoletti. But Pete Aiello will be upstairs, and he will give you the very few scratches and changes on the card. Good luck today. Have a fun Friday afternoon at Gulfstream.